War Warrior Online, FLC-8R, Falconer. Overview. Hansa Davian, shortly before his tragic death in 3052, wanted to beat the Jade Falcons at their own game, and called for a design that would tame the Jade Falcons. No one knows if the name Falconer was a joke, but it stuck. Capabilities. The Falconer specifications called for a mech capable of taking on a clan Omnimech in combat. Though at that time, unable to produce Omnimex, Starhees Industries engineers copied features from several clan designs, marrying them with the best rediscovered technologies currently available. The Falconer's Valiant Chainmail armor and modified Endo Steel chassis made for a solidly protected machine, while the extra light engine, coupled with the mech's jump capability, make it one of the Innisfere's most mobile heavy battle mechs. The Poland Gauss Rifle and the Defiance ERPPC provide accurate and deadly long-range firepower. For close combat, the Falconer boasts four reliable Defiance medium lasers. The mech's only real weakness is its heat dissipation capacity, its ten double-strength heat sinks not being enough to allow for continual fire. In the years since its debut, many have tried to improve on the Falconer's design, or make up for its few flaws, every attempt so far having failed to equal the original. A testament to the Falconer's capabilities. Deployment. Units like the Davian Heavy Guards, the 10th Deneb Light Cavalry, and the 23rd Arcturan Guards were among the first to field the Falconer. Since then, it's gained popularity and spread throughout the Fed Sons and Lyran militaries thanks to its standout performance in operations like the Fedcom raid on Sudeten in 3054. Though ultimately considered a military failure, that strike by the 5th and 12th DLC freed hundreds of POWs. Moreover, it proved the Falconer could live up to its name. DLC mech warriors piloting the five prototype Falconers assigned to the regiments racked up an impressive 21 kills. And while only one Falconer left Sudeten operational, the mech's fate and legend was sealed when the AWFC immediately pressed for full-scale production. Though originally designed and produced by Thahis Industries, General Motors plans on New Valencia licensed production of the Falconer following Archon Catherine Steiner Davian's assumption of control of New Avalon. This move made the Falconer one of the most prominent new battlenet designs in both the AFFS and the LAAF. Additionally, the Comguards and the SLDF began producing the Falconer shortly after the formation of the new Star League. Notable Mech Warriors Mech Warrior Rebecca among mech warriors, there are heroes and villains, and then there are those like Rebecca, whose exploits in the past decade are infamous. She first gained notoriety during Operation Guerrero, serving with the 1st McCarran's Armoured Cavalry on Hessian. She single-handedly destroyed six second Fedcom mechs. Receiving no credit for her actions, she went AWOL, snuck into the enemy's encampment and stole the enemy commander's falconer. In response, her own commander placed her under arrest. She escaped, killing a guard and putting four more in the hospital, took her falconer and then disappeared into the Chaos March. She bounced around from world to world for a number of years, making a living as hired gun and adding to her bloodthirsty reputation. Then she had the encounter of a lifetime. While stalking mech warriors on both sides of the fight on Cathal, she came across the bounty hunter in his green madcap. Not recognising who he was, she tried to take down the lone clan mech. Instead, the bounty hunter made short work of her. Rather than kill her, however, he made her an offer that she couldn't refuse. Within a week, her mech was repaired and she joined the Bounty Hunter's team. Since then, her reputation for cruelty has grown, along with her kill rate and bank account. Acolyte 10 Epsilon Robert Mickleby Acolyte Mickleby joined the Comguards a few months before Operation Serpent. Assigned to the 2nd Division, he witnessed firsthand the bloody fighting on Huntress. Unlike most of his comrades, he survived, but barely, and with serious emotional scars. On the battlefield, he and his falconer are a force to contend with. Off the field, he's a vociferous opponent of Victor Steiner Davian, whom he blames not only for the deaths of his friends on Huntress, but also for Comstar losses during the Fedcom Civil War. Yeah, um, a bit of a weird looking one, this one. The idea of this thing being so capable is a little unbelievable, but at the same time, there's something about it that I don't, that I kind of like, so I don't really dislike it visually. It, it's, I think this one is more of an acquired taste. 
It's another 75 tonner with a McLaren 75B chassis with a GM 65, uh, 375XL engine, cruise of 54, max of 86, jump jets provided by Devil A7 giving it 150 meters, armor Valiant chainmail, with a single Defiance 1001 extended range PPC, four Defiance B3M medium lasers, and a Poland main model A Gauss rifle, manufactured on Tharhees Industries and General Motors at Tharcad and New Valencia. Communication system as of Tharhees Calliope ZE2, targeting and tracking as Tharhees Ares 7i. It has 20 heat dissipation, as it mentioned, with an armor factor of 184, it's giving it pretty decent protection at 31 on the CT, 8 on the rear, 21 on both side torsos, with 6 on the rear, 19 on the arms, and 22 on the legs. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's, it's a pretty straightforward mech. 75 tons with a pretty decent amount of you know, heavy firepower at range. I guess that's, you know, the main strength of this thing is you don't get it close, you keep it at distance. And 585 move, uh, run and jump is pretty decent as well, especially again for 75 tons. The only downside being that it's an XL engine, as we know, in the sphere XLs explode. Interesting that there were no, uh, no variants even mentioned, although it does say that several attempts have been made. I imagine that there are those in the community who could sit down and very easily make improvements to this machine, if not completely redesign it and make it something far more deadly for 75 ton, even keeping in the engine. Or upgrading it later on with something like a light engine instead, for instance. Um, yeah, it kind of looks more like a power armor set or some kind of security machine given the artwork than an actual battle mech. But as I said, I don't dislike it. I do have questions about how it would walk, especially where the legs are positioned. Um, but again, yeah, there's something about it that I kind of like. I'm not quite sure what it is though. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's an odd one, but, uh, hey, the Falconer, 75 tons, but, uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. How about that? So, uh, catch you next time. Have a good week, everybody. And I'll uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.